All right, good day. So I'm representing the group for age-related macular degeneration, and I'm Caleb Ofosu Yaboa. Now, this condition, age-related macular degeneration, is a very important uh, condition that needs to be critically understood. Know the nutritional linkage. In fact, this class focuses much on the nutritional linkage, but there's a need for us to get a very deep and gross understanding about the epidemiology, some systemic review, and anatomy and physiology, and then we dive deep into nutritional linkage. All right. Now let's look at some objectives. Now at the end of this very lecture, one is required to know the breakdown and definition of ARMD, know the epidemiology of ARMD, some systemic review of ARMD, a brief anatomy and physiology of the macular various classifications of ARMD, risk factors for ARMD, diagnosis of ARMD, some symptoms of metamorphosia, management of ARMD, nutritional treatments for ARMD, and some references provided. Now let's understand the breakdown of the term age-related macular degeneration. Macula is a central region of the retina for detailed central and color vision. So if I go to the retina and I want to see the macula, I just go to the central region of the retina and I'm going to see my macula. And note, if I lose my macula, if I lose the, the anatomy and physiology of the macula, I'm not only going to lose my central vision, but I'm going to lose my detailed and color vision as well. So in macular degeneration, we don't look at the central uh, vision loss, but an aspect of color vision and detailed vision is also going to be impaired. Now, age related means changing as an individual's age increases. Degeneration means deterioration and loss of function in the cells of a tissue or organ. So this macular degeneration is associated with aging. That means aging becomes a risk factor, and that is that. Now let's look at the macular degeneration as a whole. Macular degeneration is a group of progressive eye conditions which involves generation of the macula that is central region of the retina. So here, a patient or someone having macular degeneration will be saying this one. So the macula is being deteriorated. Therefore, the central region and the peripheral region is a little bit clear, but the central is being impaired. Let's look at epidemiology of RMD. Epidemiology is talking about the study of health-related states or diseases among group of people. Now, age-related macular degeneration accounts for 8.7% of all blindness worldwide and is the most common cause of blindness in the developed countries, particularly in people older than 60 years. Its prevalence is likely to increase as a consequence of exponential population aging. Furthermore, studies have suggested substantial ratio or ethnic group differences in disease prevalence. In the Baltimore Eye Study, people of European, that's the whites, were more likely to have an early and late stage disease than were those of African. Why? This is very because individuals in the developed countries live longer than those in Africa. Also, studies have shown that women are more susceptible to ARMD than men because they live approximately 5% longer than men. In addition, studies tell us that diet and lifestyle influences disease presentation. Now let's look at a very short systemic review of ARMD. And this is about food groups and risk of age-related macular degeneration. Now all the available evidence from prospective four studies that investigated the association between consumption of food groups and the occurrence of age-related macular degeneration. Now cohort, cohort study and line. Now in epidemiology, before we go through various kind of studies and bring out an intervention, there is a need for us to state a hypothesis, formulate our hypothesis. After formulating, we try to test the hypothesis. After testing, we try as much as possible to prove our hypothesis in that order. So descriptive talks about where we will be formulating our hypothesis. After formulating, there's a need for us to test our hypothesis, and we deal with the analytical studies. And that is where we have two major studies over there. That is the core study and case control study. After analytical study, we, that we go on to prove a hypothesis, and that is about the experimental study. And that is where we are going to prove a hypothesis, and in the next intervention available, we try to introduce. So in fact, core study and then case control is known to be analytical study, where we are going to test a hypothesis. Core study, it's a prospective study and 
again, it's a forward-looking study. I pick 100 people, and I wait for a couple of, maybe, depending on the incubation period, I wait for maybe years and see whether, if, for, for instance, I, if people, people are smoking now, I pick 100 of them, and I wait for a couple of years, and I see whether they're going to get lung cancer. If they get lung cancer, then indeed, as they are smoking right now, the smoking might be a risk factor for them to get lung cancer. But since the incubation period is longer for, for, for one to get lung cancer, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for about 10 to 15 years and see whether if indeed, is this the smoking that they are smoking today that is going to give them lung cancer in future? That becomes a core study. So I am looking forward to see the results. So it becomes a forward-looking study. It's a prospective study. Now, case control. I pick those who have the lung cancer today and I look back to see whether they were smoking. So if indeed they were smoking and the majority of them are having lung cancer, then I say, okay, then it's because they were smoking, that's why they have the lung cancer. Therefore, I will associate with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the risk factor of smoking. So that one, I go back to see whether they were smoking and that becomes a backward looking study or retrospective study. So let's, look at it. let's take a close look of this review. I just brought in some figures for us to get a very deep understanding. At the end of the selection process, 26 articles, these are our data, were included in the meta-analysis for a total of this uh, number, subject and about 7,154 cases of AMD. By comparing the highest versus the lowest consumption food analysis showed no significant association with AMD for vegetables, fruits, nuts, grains, dairy products, as well as dietary fats such as oils, butter, and margarine. Fish determined a significant reduction of risk for total AMD, as well as for both early and late. On the other hand, high meat consumption was associated with a significant increased risk of early, but no late AMD. Finally, a significant increased risk of AMD for the highest consumption of alcohol was reported. So in conclusion, the results of the present meta-analysis show a significant 18% reduced risk for fish and a 20% increased risk for alcohol consumption. In addition, an increased risk was observed for meat, but only in the subgroup of LAMD. And this reference, a reference about this is provided the, at the last page. So this is a very simple systemic review that was uh, undertaken by a couple of people uh, relating to the food groups and all that. So systemic review are uh, going through and should be an evidence-based analysis and all that to come into that. Now, anatomy and physiology of the macula. Since we are talking about the macular degeneration, there's a need for us to understand the macula, know where it's located, so that if there's any symptoms, you're able to diagnose that, yes, indeed, it is as a result of macula being deteriorated, that is why it's accounting for that. Now, with the macula, we realize that it's at a central region of the retina. So this is our macula, right? So within, within the macula, we have the fovea. Within the fovea, we have fovella, and within fovella, we have the umbo. And within this phobia, we have this um, cones for color vision. Therefore, if this whole macula is being deteriorated, it means that I'm going to use my central color vision deterioration as well. Now, at the level of macula, there are no blood vessels. Note, the retina receives double blood supply, but at the level of macula, it receives only one double blood supply, one supply from the curia capillaries. Indeed, it's not a capillary anyway, it's a sinusoid, but we are not, I'm not there. Uh, for that explanation here, but just know that the macula is not being supplied by the central retinal artery. Therefore, it receives a blood supply from the choreo capillary. Therefore, if I see any blood leakage over there, it's as a result of the, the uh, choreo capillaries leaking over there. Now, this is the macula. The macula is having a xanthophil, macular pigmentation. Now, all the layers of retina are having 10, but the level of macula, we don't have 10, we only have about four layers exposing the bros to more light so that it will help in detail in central vision. That is why there should be no blood vessels. And indeed, there are no blood vessels at all of macula to, to, to disrupt the incoming light waves because we want detailed vision. And therefore, since light waves will be hitting themselves here directly, there is a need for us to be um, a, a visual, a macular pigment which will absorb some of the harmful light waves. And this macular pigment becomes the gluten and the answer. And we obtain this now from diet. Therefore, if you, if you don't take in diet, which contains much of gluten and zinc, it means your macular pigment uh, is going to be impaired and therefore it will expose your eye to more danger. Now, let's look at some risk factors for ARMD. Smoking, age, obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, family history of disease, poor nutrition, heredity, 
eating a lot of saturated fats contribute to age-related macular degeneration. In fact, taking in the saturated fats will contribute to the loosening, and you get to know as we proceed. Now, diagnosis of ARMD. Now, check out for metamorphopsia symptoms. Metamorphopsia is a clinical term given when a straight line appears wavy. Amstelag grade helps with the assessment of central vision. Amstelag grade is given with a central dot target to fixate if the lines at the area of the central target appear wavy. Metamorphopsia, that's metamorphopsia or straight. It is a sign if the lines appear wavy. Here, the distortion of the lines depends on the degree of degeneration of the macula. Patient is usually given the arm to take home. He or she is required to trace the line from time to time. This helps to know whether the degeneration is increasing or not. So this is the arm slide break over here. So this is the arm slide break over here. So if the person having macular degeneration, you realize that here will be distorted. So you're given the pen to trace the lines, you realize that the lines, the patient will, the patient will be drawn and distorted. Now, secondly, how can I diagnose ARMD? By fundus fluorescein angiography to assess the leakage of blood at the macular region. So fundus fluorescein is given into the uh, vein intravenously and goes to various uh, vessels. And since you have vessels at the back of the eye, it goes there. So if you're having any, any, any leakage, you're going to see, in case of wet AMD, you're going to see this kind of leakage. Now, this is a normal fundus angiography here. There is no, there's nothing wrong with the, with the vessels of the, at, the, at, the, at the level of the retina. Now let's look at the phases of fluorescein angiography. If I try to give fluorescein dye intravenously, going all to the vessels to the back of the how, what are the stages that we're going through? We have one called the pre-arterial phase. That's the first one. And from pre-arterial phase, it goes to the arterial phase, where you go to the various arteries. And from the arterial phase, it's going to, it's to go to the capillaries, the pre capillaries. That is the atrial venous phase. And from the atrial venous phase, you go to the venous phase. And from the venous phase, you go to the late phase. Therefore, you'll be studying the time it will be going through and monitor if there is any leakage anywhere. Diagnosis of ARMD continuation. We're talking about Indochina angiography for assessing blood vessels leakage. The ICG dye, which contains iodine, is injected into the vein in the arm. Now, you have phases of ICG as well. We have the early phase, and it takes about 60 seconds, 60 seconds post injection after injection. That it goes to the other, the corroda arteries. And from the early phase, you go to early mid phase, and it takes about one to three minutes to get there. Corroda veins and retinal vessels should be filled with this endocyanic green. All right, so the late, late mid phase, it takes about 13 to 15 minutes. Coda vessels fading, but the retinal vessels actually are still visible. Late phase takes about 14 to 45 minutes. And here, hyperfluorescent corridor vessels and gradual fading of diffuse hypofluorescence should be viewed. So here you view whether there is hyperfluorescence or hypofluorescence, and it helps to diagnose whether there's any leakage of blood vessel. Now, optical coherence topography. This also helps us to see fluid or blood underneath your retina without dye. Selenium charts also helps in diagnosis. Here, visual acuity with the help of pinhole. Vision will not improve with pinhole if AMD present, but basically as to whether vision will improve depends on the degree of generation of the macula. Vision may not improve in the case of late ARMD. Now, let's look at some classification of ARMD in terms of type. There are two main types. We have the dry, non exudative, or non vascular AMD, and we have the wet, exudative, or vascular AMD. The dry. People with this may have yellow deposit called drusen in their macula. A few small drusen may not cause changes in the vision, but as they get bigger and more numerous, they might dim or distort the vision, especially when you read. As the condition gets worse, the light sensitive cells in your macula gets thinner and eventually die. In the atrophic form, you may have blind spots in the center of your vision. As that gets worse, you may lose your central vision. Yellow, de yellow waste deposit called within form on the retina, and this dry is less severe. And it occurs most among people. Next patient of all cases of AMD is as, is as a result of dry AMD. And here you have atrophy of the RP layer occurring. So this is an image showing the dry AMD. This is the red free. You realize that you'll be seeing this under the red free. 
If like there's this port over here, tell you there's a type of drive where we have the dosin being deposited over there, and that is that. And then, then dosin is actually um, made up of lipids and protein. And that's how you'll be seeing them be deposited at the level of macula and it deteriorates the cells over there. So this is also an email talking about showing about the still drive. We have this, so I have my uh, red free, and this is a cross sectional of the level of macula. And we have this as well, green red free. Now let's go to the wet AMD. In wet AMD, unwanted proliferating blood vessels leave blood and free, causing permanent damage to life sensitive retinal cells. Blood vessels grow from one underneath your macula. These blood vessels leak blood and fluid into your retina. Your vision is distorted, so straight lines look baby. You may lose, you may have, you may also have blind spot and loss of central vision. These blood vessels and their bleeding eventually form a scar, leading to a permanent loss of central vision. Rapidly, progressively marked loss of vision, not painful, more severe than dry RMD, accounts for 10% of all cases of RMD as dry accounts for 90% of AMD. Early symptoms, late straight lines appear baby, and central vision blind spots may develop. This is an image showing the red AMD. This is a critical image, a nice image showing um, the red, red AMD, and it leaks underneath your retina, I mean the macula. So this leakage of blood vessel is not from the central retina artery, but beneath the macula. That's the core capillaries, which supplies it by diffusion and here there's a leakage of this blood vessel from this core capillary and it is diffusing into the area of macula and it's going to disrupt the cells over there to cause this generation of the macula. So this is a red free showing the patch, you see here the patch of here, showing the leakage of blood vessel over there. Now let's look at another form of classification of AMD in terms of stages. We have the early AMD, intermediate AMD, late AMD, and you have geographic AMD. The early AMD dosing present here are small and hard. At this stage, there are no symptoms and no vision loss. So here, as I can see the pinhole, vision will improve because there is no vision loss at the moment. Intermediate AMD, people with intermediate AMD have either many medium sized dosing or one or more large dosing. Some people see a blurred spot in the center of their vision, more light may be needed for reading and other tasks. Late AM, the dosing present here are large and soft and causes visual disturbance. They have a breakdown of the light into cells and supporting tissues in the central retina. This interruption can cause a blurred spot in the center of your vision. Over time, the blurred spot they get bigger and darker, taking more of your central vision. You may have difficulty reading or recognizing faces until they are very close to you. And the geographic, this is the advanced form of late AMD that makes it more serious. Now, how do you manage the dry AMD? There, are, there is no effective treatment for dry AMD at this point in time. No FDA approved treatment exists for dry AMD. However, studies indicate that one, taking dietary supplements and antioxidants, vitamin A, C, E, and zinc, leucine and zinc, and omega 3 fatty acids may help prevent or slow down dry AMD, as well as smoking cessations. So, it's very much important. Now, what about the wet AMD? Various FDA approved drugs are used to slow down the progression of red AMD. Antivitral anti VGF therapy. Now, when it says VGF, it's a signaling protein which supports the growth of new vessels. Therefore, since there will be new proliferating vessels be forming in case of red AMD, which, we are not, which, which, which are not so strong enough, and at that point in time, they might best in cause a leakage. And as a result of this VGF, which is a signal protein, which will be enhancing the growth of these new vessels. Therefore, I need an anti-VGL, which will help slow down or even stop the, the proliferating or this growing of new vessels. An example of this was the Bepazicumab, and the other drugs to stop the growth of these new vessels. Now, photodynamic laser therapy, doctor gives a light-sensitive drug into the bloodstream and then shine light into your eyes, saying this, um, Drive will go into all the laser, we go into all part of the vessel. So I will shine a laser into my eye. Since I'll be having, I can see the back of my eye with the vessel, this drug will get there. So shine a light uh, into your eyes to trigger the medication to damage the vessel, the blood vessel. And this is an example of the drug that's the visudine. Mm -hmm. The micro or micro nutrients carotenoids linked to AMD. Numerous studies investigating AMD with the use of cell culture have identified obesity stress related. Retina damage is an important contributing factor. 
You see, a self-watch house of pain from the right time, it, was going, it, it went to an, a couple of analysis. And we got to know that the most of retina damage is as a result of oxidative stress. Therefore, we need more of antioxidants to reverse this action. Now, in general, diet is an excellent source of the antioxidant, vitamins and minerals necessary for healthy living. Moreover, the general public is often receptive to recommendations by physicians and healthcare empowering themselves to avoid common and worrisome elements such as AMD. A wide variety of nutrients such as minerals, vitamins, fatty acids, and various carotenoids have been associated with the reducing and risk of AMD. Initial results from the age-related eye disease study indicated that supplementation with antioxidants, that's beta carotenoid and vitamin C and E and zinc was associated with reduced risk of AMD progression. The second follow-up study designed to improve upon their early formulation tested the addition of lutein, zeaxanthin, and omega-3 fatty acid. Let's look at some nutritional treatments. Very much important. Most of retinal damage is, is associated with oxidative stress, as I said earlier. Therefore, studies indicate that taking a vitamin A, C, and E, leucine, cyanine, antioxidant, and omega-3 fatty acids may help prevent or treat dry AMD. Food containing high levels of zinc also may be of particular value in patients with macular degeneration. Vegetables have high levels of antioxidants, including leucine and cyanine, which may benefit people with macular degeneration. Now, let's look at some food sources of this important element. So vitamin A, you can see them in uh, carrots, tuna, lettuce, beef, liver, sweet potato, palm oil, and etc. Vitamin C, citrus foods like oranges, strawberries, potatoes, gava, green pepper, pineapple, or its supplements may be required. Vitamin E, avocado, olive oil, shrimp, purple, red, sweet pepper, mangoes, etc. as supplement as well. Zinc, oyster, chicken, lentils, low-fat yogurt, mushroom, and oatmeal, exterior, copper nuts, and seeds, salmon, avocado, whole grain, product, organ meat, chocolate, etc. Lutein and zeaxanthin can have them in green peas, eggs, corn, cola, spinach, and all that. Sometimes you might, you might recommend a particular food, food or food for a patient, and the patient will tell you, please, I don't like this food. Therefore, you can get a supplement for the patient. And that is the nutritional linkage. And with this, this um, help of these vitamins and lutein and zeaxanthin to help they prevent or slow down the, the rate at which the macula is being deteriorated. For example, vitamin A helps in the pigments over there and it helps the pigment to recover anytime it's bleached and all that. Vitamin C helps, you see the, 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 the leakage of blood, it uh, often deposits a, a scar and vitamin C will help recover. Vitamin E too is known to be an antioxidant which helps to enrich the lutein and zeaxanthin at the level of the macula. That's the xanthophyll at the level of the macula. Zinc and copper, lutein and zeaxanthin, main antioxidants, which have to mop up the free radicals at the level of macula for our normal or to depress or to suppress the generation or I mean, to stop the, the, the generation of the macula as a whole. So these are the references which supported my document or as a whole uh, of the group of eight related macular generation. I know this is a very simple aspect of the eye condition to understand. You've understood the nutritional linkage, the anatomy and the physiology, some systemic review, epidemiology, some risk factors which are involved and all that. Thank you very much.